Hi everyone, um, I'm Sean Gilmore, and I'd like to welcome you to La Sala de Galisteo, which is our longtime cultural center and dance hall in Galisteo, New Mexico. Um, Galisteo is a village of about 250 people. That's been consistent for quite a while. Um, La Sala was originally a dance hall, and it was built in the late 1800s um, and started becoming active as a dance hall and center uh, in 1902, 1903. But it existed for a long, long time as the place where all the villagers would gather. And on Saturday nights, they would literally have dances. They would also come here for weddings and other cultural events. Um, and it was uh, taken care of and owned, uh, and still is owned, by the men's group of uh, Santa Maria, our local church. So we, as a group and as a board, came together um, in 2008 and decided that this building was worth preserving. And it was very important that we did it in the right way, so we were able to garner historic status. Um, and uh, work on the building slowly but surely. So we've brought in youth groups to mud the outside, um, to work on the windows, which are still in process. And to do little by little, we've been building it out and getting it more stable. Uh, lately, the last three or four years, we've been putting together um, these thematic art shows. We've had art shows in the summer for a while, um, and they were primarily uh, Galisteo artists. Galisteo is an amazing community. We have lots of artists, writers, chefs, I mean, a little bit of everything here. So um, we decided to do these visual art shows of our community artists. And then maybe two or three years ago, we started thematic shows. Uh, last year, we did best seats in the house. It was all based on the idea of chairs. This year, uh, we are doing um, a, a thematic show that is based on people's influences as artists. It's titled uh, Under the Influences. Under the Influences brought in quite a number of really beautiful art pieces. Um, we're very proud of the show. Um, we're doing two different versions this summer. This first phase will come down uh, the third week of July, and a new phase will come in that opens on July 20th. Um, so we'll have music for that opening, we'll have lots of refreshments, um, and we'll have a whole new group of artists, very strong artists, in that show as well. All right, so I'd like to bring you through the artwork that we have here um, currently, and I'll start with these four pieces here, since I'm standing right next to them. This is very interesting because it's, um, it's a group of pieces that were done collaboratively by four people. Um, and they are Doug Jones, uh, Laura Yates, and James Gold, and Rebecca Wilcox. Um, and they work together, and they're all good woodworkers and great artists. Um, and I love the fact that they collaborated on this work. It, it makes it very interesting. Laura Yates is actually now a resident of Galisteo. Um, and she apparently, I haven't seen them yet, but does incredible, incredible work in wood, um, both furniture and artwork. Okay, um, now I'd like to focus in on Giotti Schoen. Um, this is a really wonderful indoor-outdoor kind of sculpture uh, that's influenced, I believe, by many of his travels. Um, and Giotti talks about spending a long time in India and thinking about tantric philosophy. Um, these sculptures range all over the place. Uh, but they're sort of wonderful, made out of stone, wood, a variety of materials. Um, and as I said before, they can apply indoors and outdoors. This very contemporary and colorful form is by an artist named Rodney Carswell. 
And I believe Rodney um, spent quite a long time as an educator. So he's very informed about both art history and contemporary art. And he cites his influences as being incredibly wide ranging, um, but does particularly focus in on Eva Hess. Um, and I'd like to talk a little bit about Eva Hess because she's been an influence on me and mainly because she was an incredibly inventive artist who loved to explore materials. And I think that is actually the case of many of these artists in our show. Um, and Rodney cites her influence and I do too, so I want to point that out. Okay, this is a piece by Robert Alexander. And Robert has put in an image of Billy the Kid, which of course is very referential to New Mexico history and exciting for us. Um, he cites as his influence Robert Rauschenberg, uh, and he calls this a collage. So it uses a lot of photo elements and collage elements. Um, and Billy the Kid may have gone through Galisteo, at least we like to imagine that at some point he did, but of course, that's a flight of fancy. <laughs> okay, this is a piece by a good friend of mine, Ilona Pockler. And Ilona is a really interesting and sensitive artist. Um, she likes to think about literary references. Um, and this piece is bought from a larger group of work um, that is almost an installation, you could call it. And there are clay ceramic boats as part of the installation. And she references specifically um, a great classical work of literature, uh, the Iliad and the Odyssey. Carol Rose Brown makes these digital combines that are both photography and to me they feel very painterly as well. Um, this image can be a little bit disturbing to people, but it's very interesting because uh, Carol talks about in her statement her emotional sense of being and growing up in a family that truly discouraged her from becoming an artist and exploring who she really was. So I think her work really reflects that. This piece is by Nina Mastrangelo, and Nina spent a long time as a teacher in both elementary and junior high school. So you can really see the influence of the hand here and her manipulation of the clay and such a beautiful material to work with. Um, Nina's another person who I'm sure, even if she hasn't said so, is very influenced by Eva Hess and the idea of materials and art. Um, and then we can move through here to Jerry and uh, Jerry has worked with a little bit of a Polaroid camera and many of his animals. This was a dog that he named Agnes Martin, <laughs> who also was a resident of Galisteo. Um, Jean Anaya Moya uh, grew up in Galisteo. Her family was very prominent both in this area and across the state. And she happens to be our current fire chief um, of our Galisteo Volunteer Fire Department. Jean has been working in traditional straw applique, which is a very New Mexican material. And the imagery is referencing um, many of the small villages. But the church that you see in this piece, um, which is so intricately done, is uh, the Chimayo Church, I believe. At least that's what it looks like to me. Um, and also, we, you know, there are many, many references to Galisteo and her family's life. Uh, she's one of the from one of the original land grant families. Okay, this work is a piece by Susanna Carlisle and Bruce Hamilton. And they work as a couple. They're married, uh, have been for many years. Um, and they have progressed from an architecture background, particularly Susanna, who went to University of Pennsylvania and was one of the last students to study under Louis Kahn. Um, she and Bruce 
have been melding their interest in architecture and video into uh, works that have to do with environmentalism and what's happening to our world now and how to help it along and solve a pretty giant cultural problem. Uh, this particular piece you can see is quite influenced by architecture. Um, they cite some specific influences. Ricolet, I think, um, who was an architect, French architect, uh, and they keep moving forward with beautiful pieces that are both architectural and, and lively in scope. John Massey um, is a longtime neighbor um, and artist in the village here. I believe he's lived here even longer than I have, 28 years. Maybe he's been here 35 years. Um, John is a metal worker primarily and makes these wonderful, large, whimsical sculptures. Um, you can see them as you go down uh, 42, which is Camino Los Abuelos. Um, his place is on the right-hand side, and there's a huge area of sculptures, and they're fun to, to gaze at, uh, even from a distance. This one, he cites as his influence a very simple statement, roadkill between Galisteo, New Mexico, and Ontario, Canada. <laughs> um, and I believe he used a kind of metal... Uh, piece of machinery that they call a bead worker or a beading machine. I'm not quite clear on that, so don't cite me. Um, but they, it stamps out uh, in linear form uh, these images into metal. Um, and he's been having a lot of great fun with that machine. This is a work called Sourcing the Noise by William Scripps. Uh, and he works with a variety of materials that he finds in the landscape and at dumps and all over the place. This piece itself is particularly wood, um, at, but there are some metal elements, some plastic elements. Uh, it's just so great to have that found source material and reuse what you can get out there. And I, I really love that Willem keeps working that way. And here is another great manipulator of materials, Jack Bordnick. He has vacuum formed plastic into these two rising profiles, about to kiss, or we can all imagine what they're about to be doing. But Jack is certainly someone who just plays with materials and is very forceful in his way of exploring the idea of material. OK, Jerry Wellman is an artist of very lively mind and sensibility. Uh, Jerry is also one of the proprietors of Axel Contemporary, which is an art van that runs around Santa Fe that is really fun to see and has great installations. Um, so I love his way of looking at the world from a left-hand perspective. Um, and another artist with an extremely lively mind is Peggy Diggs. Uh, Peggy has both a refined aesthetic and visual sensibility uh, paired with a really passionate approach to culture and politics. Um, this piece is so amazingly thoughtful. Um, and she's been working with the idea of black and white, um, how white people subsume the society and, and black people are in the shadows but are working forward. And uh, Peggy really thinks about life and politics in a way that no one else I know does. This beautifully colorful painting is by Jim Sloan. Uh, Jim cites as his reference the environment. So you can see 
that the environment today is maybe not what we'd like it to be. Um, but this is about the news. It's about what's going on uh, right now as we, as we walk through it. Uh, Jim is also a Galisteo resident. And I can say that not only is he a wonderful painter, but he's also a wonderful mover of dirt and our resident expert in rattlesnakes. This photograph is titled After Stieglitz, and the artist, Corey McGillicuddy, is a Galisteo resident and has been making photographs for quite a few years. And this photograph clearly references a very famous photograph by Alfred Stieglitz of Georgia O'Keeffe's hands. The activity is different, but the photograph itself is a beautiful testimony to photography in New Mexico and the influence of both Georgia O'Keeffe and Alfred Stieglitz. Uh, this piece is my own work, and it is called Branching Out After a Series of Paper Mache Sculptures I'm Making. Branching Out, Dark is the Color. Uh, I've been working with paper mache for about six years now, and I find it to be a really incredibly tactile material that is fun to work with and also organically grows um, on its own, which is the way I like to think about art in general. I like it to happen as I'm working um, and have it be a kind of natural growth process. Uh, paper mache also is lovely for me because it takes me back to my third grade roots and um, the influences are forever in my mind as a kind of familial history because both my parents were artists and we lived in a very eclectic uh, household full of creativity. So, I like to cite them, uh, Marianne Gilmore and Bill Gilmore, as my prominent influences, as well as many artists out there, Jean Dubuffet, and prominently, Eva Hess. Here we have two pieces by women artists. On the top is something by Susan Case. It's titled Portrait of a Young Girl. And Susan works um, both in collage and paint. I believe this is oil paint, and it's on wood. And as you can see, she's cut the wood. And what I'm curious about is whether she's cut the wood after the piece is painted or before the piece is painted, because that makes quite a difference in how in the methodology of working with the paint. And below Susan's piece is an abstract work by Rene Dubois Carswell. And Rene is married to Rodney Carswell, one of our earlier artists. Um, and this piece is both dark and light in feel. Um, it's very intricate. It's done with pen and ink. Um, and the, the hand is there throughout. Um, I think it's quite beautiful. And, speaks to me about cosmos and atmosphere and weather and just an environment that's all around us all the time. It has a finality to it, which is really interesting. This is a piece by Caroline Hinckley. And Caroline uh, makes photographs that are very environmental in nature. Uh, this one is of a glacier. And what's truly unique about this particular piece is that Caroline has actually included her influence in the piece itself. So on the bottom, this image is one by Emile Schumacher. Um, and it directly influenced Caroline's photograph of the glacier on top. The piece is actually called Finding Emile Schumacher. Okay, last but not least, we have a piece here by Mike Frick. And um, Mike is a gentleman who has expressed to me how 
he went from doing portraits, um, and I, I gather that he was a fairly well-known portrait painter, uh, to making these abstract paintings. And there was a really intentional reason for that, and that is because he is going blind, which is an unfortunate thing for an artist, but of something like that happening is something as bold and colorful and strong as this painting is.